We are live. Okay, so today what we're talking about is simplifying, what is it, 311? Simplifying roots, and we're also going to talk about rational exponents. Tuesday, which you guys are not here Tuesday, but we talked about Tuesday. If you watch the film, is that any number to an exponent is a fraction. So any number that has a, what we call rational, that's the whole thing here is this word rational exponents. Rational means fraction. So if it has a fractional exponent, we can rewrite this. That's my root. And that's my power. So that's my root, and that's my power, okay? And that's what we learned on Tuesday. And I'm going to keep that. We're going to use that when we get down to these, okay? All right, first of all, before we do anything else, let's go back to geometry. So the first um, couple of questions are back from geometry, okay? Stuff we learned in geometry. So example one. Oh, square root a fraction, but this one looks pretty easy, actually. I'm not going to make this one hard at all, because there is a square root of 9, 3, and a square root of 16. So I'm going to rewrite it like the square root of 9 and the square root of 16, right? So instead of looking at it as a fraction, let's look at it a top part of the problem and a bottom part. The square root of 9 is 3, that's easy, and the square root of 16 is 4, and we're done. We made a problem that looked pretty hard, a fraction problem into just two squares, okay? And number two, we talked about this in our warm-up. So you're not supposed to have a square root in the denominator, in the bottom. You're not. So what we do is we call it fix the problem with the problem. Fix the problem with the problem. Fix the problem with the problem. The problem is this. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. And that will fix the problem. It will. So then, how does it fix the problem? Well, on the bottom, in the denominator, we get the square root of 25. And we know what the square root of 25 is 5. Okay. So I'm not done with this problem, but what I've done is the rule is you can't have a square in the bottom. There's no square in the bottom anymore. Now the top, mm, well, 3 times the square root of 5 is just 3 square roots of 5. That's all you do. <coughs> don't, <coughs> don't divide those. So example 3 is kind of like both of these. So to start off, first of all, that's like a square root of 5 over a square root of 7, okay? You can't have a square at the bottom. You cannot have a square at the bottom. So you fix the problem with the problem, okay? So if I fix the problem with the problem, I'm going to rewrite this as multiply by the square root of 7, square root of 7. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply square root of 7 times square root of 7, square root of 49. And that's going to just be a plain old 7, right? I like that. There's no longer a square at the bottom. And then square root of 5 times square root of 7 square root of 35. And there's nothing I can do with that, so I'm just going to leave the square root of 35, okay? Don't divide these. Don't. Don't divide these because that's not really a 35. That is not a 35 at all. That's some ugly number. 5 point something or other, right? Square root of 35. Oh yeah, don't divide those. That is not a good number. So I'm going to leave it right there and stop, okay? All right, now, before we do example four, we got a problem, okay? Fix the problem with the problem, but you can't. So like number four, let's go ahead and write some numbers up here, okay? Write these numbers down. Eight. Twenty-seven. Sixty-four. Hundred and twenty-five. 216, 343, okay? Write those numbers down. Those are perfect cubes. Those are perfect cubes, okay? 
So I know the cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of 27 is 3. Cube root of 64 is 4, because 4 times 4 times 4. Cube root of 125 is 5. Cube root of 216 is 6, because 6 times 6 times 6. Cube root of 343 is 7, because 7 times 7 times 7. And of course, they keep going on, going on, on, but that's probably good enough, okay? Okay, write those down. Those are perfect cubes, okay? Now, shift the problem to example 4. Now, the problem is we need to make the bottom part a perfect cube. We need to make this one of, we need to make this number one of these because they'll have a cube root. Okay, so I'll say it again. We need to make the bottom one of these numbers. So what I want to do is make it an 8 because if I make it an 8, then I can take the cube root of 8. So what I want to do is make this, so I multiply this by 2, but the cube root of 2. Okay, just, so I want to get rid of the root on the bottom. To do that, it's a cube. I need to make it a perfect cube root, so I take the cube root of it, okay? Okay, so let's multiply. So I'm going to get the cube root of 8, which is, which is 2, right? So I've multiplied 4 times 2 is 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. I like that. And then on top, I'm going to get the cube root of 4, which is just an ugly number. It really is. I'll show you. Cube root of 4. Math. I'll show you real quickly. Math. Cube root of 4. Ugly number. So let's just leave it as cube root of 4, okay? All right. All right. Example 5. This one's not so bad because we're just going to go back to an old rule. So an old rule is this rule right here. If I have x to say the, well, let's make it easy. Fourth to the third, you multiply exponents. You guys remember that? You multiply exponents, you get an x to the twelfth. You guys remember that old rule? So I'm going to multiply these exponents. So that rule I'm going to apply. Multiply exponents. I'm going to get 3 to the 2 fourths. Well, that's because that's 2 times 1 fourth. 2 times 1 fourth is 2 fourths, 2 over 1. And I'm going to reduce that to 3 to the 1 half power. And I'm going to give you another little rule. Anything to the 1 half power, x to the 1 half power, is always a square root. It's always a square root. So you see the one-half power is always a square root. So you can write this as the square root of 3. Okay, number 6. There's an invisible one here. I know you don't see it because it's invisible, but there's an invisible one right here, okay? Let's go back to freshman algebra. If you had something like this, if you had, say, x to the 10th over x to the 6th, you'd subtract exponents, wouldn't you? Right? You'd subtract exponents, you get x to the 4th. Remember doing that in algebra? You subtract exponents. So I'm going to do the same thing. Here's my rules over here. I'm just going to subtract exponents. I'm going to go 10 to the 1 5th minus 1. Okay, subtract exponents. Well, what is 1 fifth minus 1? Well, that's the same thing as 10 to the 1 fifth minus, oh, wait a minute, that's 5 fifths. This makes it easier, okay? I get a common denominator, right? Now I'm going to get a 10 to the negative 4 fifths. We'll just leave it like that for right now, okay? All right, example seven. Let's multiply exponents, right? We're going to multiply. I'm going to multiply exponents, multiply. So what is three times 
4 to the 1 times a negative 1 over 4 really makes a 3 to the negative 1. I know, where am I ever going to use this, Mr. Davies? I know, sorry, you guys. Depends on what you, what you become when you grow up, right? Okay, number eight. This is a hard lesson, but we're going to get through, okay? I'm going to first add exponents. So I'm going to get a 2 to the negative 2 fourths to the negative 1. Then I'm going to multiply exponents. And I'm going to get a 2 to the positive 2 fourths. And I'm going to reduce that to 2 to the 1 half. And remember that anything in the 1 half power is a square root. Okay? Kind of a hard lesson today, but we can do it, okay? Turn the page. All right, we're getting there. All right, cube root of 81 times cube root of 9. Okay, so I can multiply that. It's going to be the cube root. What is 81 times 9? 3 and 43, I don't know. 81 times 9 is 729. All right. I think that's a perfect cube root. Let's see what's... Nope. Cube root, maybe. Cube root, 729. Oh, it's 9. So it's 9 times 9 times 9. How'd I get that? Ten. Sorry, guys. Big day today, huh? So first thing I see is I really can divide these. I can I can divide these because they're both cube roots and two does go into fifty. Okay, so let's do that first. So I'm gonna go cube root of five times the cube root of well, two goes into twenty five into fifty twenty five times, right? And then I'll multiply, and I'll get the cube root of 125. Oh, wait a minute. I think that I think I have that written down somewhere. Oh, cube root of 125 is a perfect cube root, which is just 5. All right. Let's see about this last one. We've got 4th roots and 8th roots. What? Let's see if I can do this. First thing I see is this can be the eighth root of nine, because I multiply. Which would be the fourth root of three. Oh, how did I get that magic? Well, nine is the same thing as three squared. If I reduce that to one fourth, I get that. Okay, then these two, let's put this back up here. I get the fourth root of four times the fourth root of 12. These two will cancel, and there's my answer fourth root of 12. Oh, it's a tough assignment today, you guys, but I'll help you as much as I can. Okay, this is hard stuff. I promise to help you. Okay, so my assignment for you today, we got about 10 minutes. Let me see if I can do as much of it as with you as I can. Uh, let's see, there's my notebook with all my stuff on it. Um, give me a second. What did I do with my notebook? Here it is. Here it is. Okay, so page 115 out of a journal today, okay? Page 115, we're going to do 1 through 14 all, and the extra is 16, okay? Come on, stop recording.